All right. Well, it is 4 p.m. Eastern on the dot, 3 p.m. Central, wherever you're tuning in from. I just want to give you a very warm welcome and say thank you so much for joining our second, I guess you could say annual, but I don't know how often this is going to be. So we're just going to say our second ever Community for Schools Camp in partnership with Pivot Point. And I'm super excited to have you all here. And so I know that we've got people tuning in from various states, various different schools, various different roles. And also some of you might not be familiar with who CUNITY is and what the curriculum and um, the topic really is for today's sessions and throughout the rest of this week's sessions, which CUNITY Camp, again, will be occurring every single day this week at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, and will last about 30 minutes. And so really what we're going to be talking about today is really our core financial literacy curriculum called Money EDU. And it's really what we believe, and we would like to say, humbly speaking, is the number one financial literacy curriculum for students pursuing a career in cosmetology, nail, barber, aesthetic, and massage programs. And so we really know that there's this angst or fear around the topic of money and around the topic of finance. In fact, we surveyed over 5,000 uh, beauty and wellness professionals or future professionals that are actively enrolled in a cosmetology or aesthetic program. And uh, almost 70% of them stated that they had money or math anxiety, meaning they felt a sense of fear, angst, or dread even talking about money. To put it further, 76% of those students had had zero financial related education. And so the goal of what we do at CUNITY is to really make the topic of money simple and visual and approachable so we can truly set up the next generation of beauty and wellness professionals for success in their career um, with success with their money and their craft. And so for those of you who are not familiar with the curriculum, this is the full money EDU curriculum. It is a 40 uh, module curriculum broken down into eight simple modules. And so I just wanted to make sure I gave a high level overview of the curriculum that we're speaking about today. Um, and I'm going to introduce our guest momentarily. And before I do that, I want to introduce uh, myself as well as my co-host. Um, so my name is Aaron, and I serve as president and co-founder of CUNITY and CUNITY for Schools. And the Money EDU curriculum is, of course, uh, by CUNITY for Schools. And we really focus on making the topic of money and finance simple and visual. And then I will gladly turn it over to my friend and co-host, Elcott, of our partners at Pivot Point. Elcott, you want to say hello? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Alcott Zubek, and I lead the sales team for Pivot Point here in the U.S. and Canada. So glad to be here with you today. Awesome. Now, the most important thing that we're talking about today is not Alcott and I. It's <laughs> featuring the fantastic Brittany Lejeune from um, Aveda Arts and Sciences. And Brittany is director of curriculum there. And in fact, Aveda Arts and Sciences is one of the program's earliest, if not the earliest adopter of this curriculum. And they've been a huge champion rolling this program out to all 18 of their campuses. And uh, Brittany is a huge champion for this program and has a lot of knowledge and personal experience with money. So with that, I want to dive right into speaking to Brittany. So I'm going to turn it over to Elcott to get the first question started. All right, Brittany, uh, you and I go way back. So um but I, most of the folks on the call probably don't have the pleasure of uh, knowing what you're all about. So you obviously are one of our key partners at Aveda Arts and Sciences, but um, maybe share a little bit about your role and 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 a little bit uh, about where you fit into the organization with Aveda Arts and Sciences. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so my background with Aveda Arts and Sciences um, is in education. I was a cosmetology educator for um, about a decade. And in that, I also um, was a lead educator coach for one of our campuses in Baton Rouge. Um, but for the last five, five and a half years, I have been the director of curriculum. I work really closely with our vice president of education, Tracy Sakazitz. And between the two of us, and then we also work with a close-knit team of trainers and facilitators. Um, and really our main goal together as a partnership is developing and curating the curriculum for our various programs, um, content creation, as well as we maintain an educator training program throughout the year. 
for all of our spa and cosmetology educators. Um, and a lot of my role falls in supporting the back end of those projects and then also making sure that we are in compliance with all of the state and national agencies, since we do have such a wide variety of um, institutes across 10, uh, 10 states now. Yeah. It, we'll get to 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 that to that footprint in a, in a bit, but that's a that that's a a big task in and of itself, right? So, um, yeah. so yeah. But uh, just to, as a as a, a partner, of Brittany's uh, one of my favorite partners does a ridiculously great job, and uh, and your I know your heart's coming from the right place, but when it comes to curriculum development, so well done. Awesome. Thank you. Brittany, you know, you and I have had several conversations, especially, you know, when we started bringing this program to Aveda Arts and Sciences, and also, you know, really looking at your own financial journey. And so you have a particular uh, personal passion for financial literacy, and you've shared that story um, as part of the curriculum. You actually have a money story in the curriculum, and you also have been a guest on our podcast, uh, Money O2, where we feature real life money stories. I'd love for you just to share, you know, as someone who was a cosmetologist, then moved into a new role in schools, can you share a little bit about your own um, journey with financial literacy and how it's really changed your life and, you know, why you're so passionate about sharing that with the next generation of students? Yeah, for sure. Um, I I never mind sharing this story because it was my life lesson, but if it can help someone else prevent that life lesson from happening, it's it's always a great day, right? Um, so I actually started my career in the beauty industry, immediately $20,000 in student loan debt. And I remember when I received one of the very first like bills that was due for my student loans, it said that if I took the entire 15 years to pay off my student loans, which was 18,000 was the original loan amount, I would spend over $10,000 in interest alone. And I remember thinking that that was, that was a really crazy number for me to digest, like $10,000 in interest on an $18,000 principal loan. And so fast forward a couple of years um, of making minimum payments. I had just given birth. I had my first was a newborn. I was home on maternity leave. Medical bills are piling up. And I remember there was a day when my husband and I had to look at each other and say, are we going to purchase formula today or are we going to put gas in the truck so he can go to work? Mm -hmm. And that was a really hard day for us. Um, and thankfully, I was in a position where my parents were able to help us at that time. But I just remember having the feeling that I never wanted that to happen again. And so my husband and I got really serious about financial education, um, debt education, and we made a plan to pay off all of our debt um, and get back on track with what our goals were. And so we actually were able to pay off my student loans five years early. Um, and I'm also happy to say that while I'm back in school full time now, we've been able to pay 40% of that upfront in cash. And what I will have in student loans leaving school, which is it'll be about twenty five thousand, we have a plan to pay that off in one year, twelve months, and so that only happens when well, you have the financial literacy education, like programs like Unity can provide, and then when you put that pen to paper and and lay it out, make a budget lay out your goals and follow that. And so I'm always extremely appreciative of the help and the education that I was given along the way. And I would love to see that for our students. Mm, that's powerful. And so um, is there any, do you tell that story to your students ever? Um, I have when I was teaching mm -hmm. in the classroom, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it was kind of all happening. Um, I was always very honest with, with my students about what you're coming out of school with in terms of debt. What are you going to make your first few years in the salon? And not only that, but you have to plan long term for your 401k. Um, you know, do you want short term and long term disability insurance? Like there are things that I think our students don't think about. And that might be just because they're young and that those questions, those goals are not in their face at the moment, or they may not have come from a family that teaches them. 
those skill mm-hmm. sets. And so having those discussions about real world scenarios, you know, because our students always love to think about, I'm going to be the six figure hairdresser. And, and while that is an amazing goal and they definitely can be a six figure hairdresser, that's not going to happen six to 12 months out the gate. So let's be realistic about how you set yourself up for that and not just making that six figures in five to 10 years, but how do you maintain that for the rest of your life, even beyond retirement? And so I think, I think it's a very, um, crucial thing for educators and representatives of the industry to be honest with students about what the reality is coming out of school. I totally agree. It all starts with education. I mean, I think you share that belief, Elcott. I know you share that belief too. So amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about education. Let's talk about just, and you guys have kind of, uh, what I, what I would say is you've gotten your sea legs as it relates to the curriculum and you've, Mm -hmm. you've, you really, I think, tried a couple of different approaches and you've and been able to work with the curriculum. Can you just share it from your perspective, like best practices? Like, how do you incorporate it in? Do you start it early? Do you start it late? Is you start in the middle? Or like, like, how do you start to incorporate the content with a, let's just say, even a college student who's there maybe a little bit longer, but how do you, how do you start to incorporate that into your curriculum? And how do you guys currently, you know, introduce it? Yeah, so we how we currently use the program is not actually how we initially started it. And that's just from having some aha moments. So when we initially started utilizing the CUNITY curriculum, we took the curriculum and laid it out over the entire program length. So yes, we started it in week one or two of the curriculum, and then they were getting unit eight um, near graduation. So 12 months later, but what we realized is when they are in the classroom and our curriculum, our cause curriculum is um, blocked. So they spend the first four months of school, four to five months, primarily in the classroom. And what we noticed is the students are really in that frame of mind of learning skill sets Mm. Um, because they're not thinking yet about where I'm going to work. Um, the financial literacy piece wasn't quite resonating with our students the way that we hoped it would. Um, And I think that just some of that just comes down to student priorities of, again, they're so excited about learning how to cut and color hair that anything else is just extra. And so we've shifted and now we teach um, the entire curriculum in the second half of school. So we do start at the midpoint when they enter the clinic phase of their curriculum. And what we've noticed there is once they're on the clinic floor, now they're in the mindset of Mm -hmm. thinking about long-term, where am I going to work, salons, income. And so it's easier for them to grasp the conversation and it's a priority. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can make drug connections there to to know what they're doing and you know how does how does how do what I'm doing today impact me you know financially later you know so that's that's really smart and I think that's one of the great things about having folks like you on that that really have been able to adjust and have been able to kind of have been able to to test different concepts and it's and it's I think making it relative making making sure that it, it, they can relate to it at this at the stage of the game that they're in and. Uh, yeah. And that they have, you know, that they're uh, that that sponge is 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 ready to absorb, right? So mm-hmm. like take it all in. So great, that that's fantastic. That's that's I think that's also good coaching for some other schools. So yeah, and we've we've noticed it's also easier to connect some of the larger concepts with the students in that way. So for us, it's not just about teaching the individual module in this one hour and then leaving it alone, right? The idea is that we want to support post-training as much as we can. And so we do that in a couple different ways. Um, So like, for example, you know, you might have a day where a student comes to you and say they're missing something out of their kit. They're not prepared for a clinic guest. And the first thing out of their mouth can be, well, I can't afford to replace it. So that's a really great point for us to pull up the CUNITY budgeting worksheet from the module and we sit down with them and say, okay, let's talk about how we can make this budget work to get you what you need. Um, The same thing, you know, like when we are teaching some of our material, resume building, mock interviews, that's a really great 
time to pull in unit eight, where we're talking about money agreements. And so you're starting to connect larger key concepts. And so it's not just teaching the material and then that's it. Like you're really drawing um, them and connecting point A to point B to point C for them. And so it becomes more ingrained in what they know. Yeah. At Pivot Point, we say um, <clears throat> knowing why allows the freedom to create. So if you if you know the why and you know why that if you if you figure out the why this this content is important, then the application of it becomes much easier. So fantastic. Good for y'all. You got you're you're doing some really fantastic things. I I really appreciate the work yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. It's it's the integration that you guys are doing so well. It's the connection across all different lines. And you're so spot on. And I'm glad you brought that up because it does take time to figure out how what is the best place to fit this, right? And we can mm -hmm. come in and say, okay, here's where we recommend. But you have to try it on a little bit. And I think that's such a wise understanding on your end to say, okay, where can we tweak? Because you're right, learning about how to pay off your student loans when you just took out your student loans is like, <laughs> oh, maybe we should wait until we're closer and that's yeah. becoming a little bit more, yeah. you know, it's important, but also like when it becomes a little bit more relevant for the student and top of mind. So mm -hmm. I think that's so brilliant. And, you know, one of the challenges that, you know, schools are facing right now, and one of the, the things that um, is always a challenge is how to fit in, you know, additional content like this, right? Because it's not essential. We believe it's essential, right? But it's not necessarily essential. And so um, you have the unique perspective of having to implement this. I mean, how many different states are you in right now, Brittany? So we're 18 schools across 10 states. So 10 different states, different hours, different uh, regulations in, in effect. And so um, what have you noticed as far as some of the patterns um, implementing a, across state lines and working in with uh, within different um, hour regulations? Yeah, so it's always a challenge, right, when you're thinking about, because like for us with, with our schools, our cause programs, we're trying to create as much as possible a baseline curriculum for schools that teach as few as a thousand hours and as many as 1600. Mm -hmm. And the same on the spa side, we have an even larger variance where we have anywhere from 600 hours to a thousand hours in spa program. So when we looked at the curriculum as a whole, um, and some of this did come after we really did some, some digging into it, <clears throat> excuse me, and we created a tier system. So we have a baseline um, number of modules that we deem the most important, the most critical to students to say in our programs that are shorter, if they can't receive the whole 40 hour curriculum, a 45 hour curriculum, what do we give them? What are, what's going to make the most impact, the most bang for our buck? And so we've identified um, 17 modules across all eight units. And that is our starting point. Every school gets that, gets those mm. 17 modules that are facilitated by either an educator or someone that we have pinpointed in the school as an enthusiast, passionate trainer. And so as we work our way up in program hours, then we start to layer on the next set of modules, what I'm going to call like interim. And then the programs that have 1500 plus hours for cause and um, the thousand hour program in spa, they get the full curriculum. Mm. So that's, that's what we found most beneficial was to, and we have a, an org chart for ourselves, but it's a, it's a three point tier system that we use. Yeah, you actually inspired us to create that because you're like, we have so many different hours. So we work to help actually create and say, okay, what do we also think are the most essential mm -hmm. if you can only fit in soon? So that was really due to, you know, your feedback because um, I know so many other schools struggle with that. So many schools have you to thank for help pioneering that. Um, that's amazing. I think it sounds like you just have it really structured and just identifying you know, one of the things that we say at Community, it's a saying that we follow, which is creating simplicity, which is identifying the essential and eliminating the rest, right? We mm -hmm. think all 40 of these lessons are essential, um, but there's some that are more essential, right? So starting with those and then kind of um, guiding a path, which I love you, you've gotten your tier system. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And even for the, for the programs that, that only, 
they don't, you know, when I'm talking about the 17 individual modules, those are the ones that we facilitate fully fleshed out as the hour intended lesson plan. But the other lessons, it's not that we don't facilitate them. We either facilitate them in a much shorter touch point, 15, 20 minute um, group conversation or on our workshop days, or we assign them in very specific weeks as student asynchronous learning. So when students are not with guests, um, they have the ability to work through these modules at their own pace. So they're still exposed to the whole curriculum. Um, we've just identified which modules do we fully facilitate. So asynchronous learning, hot topic, right? So very hot mm -hmm. right now for everybody. I, in fact, I shared with Aaron that I'm going to jump off this call and join an axe call about uh, um, the response to 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 this rolling. But um, so when you compare that, the you know, there's no harm, no foul in asynchronous learning. I think I think asynchronous learning for certain topics is 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 you know I think is preferred by students in, in on certain topics. Um, so, what are some, so could, could you just maybe on a high level breakdown, like what are those core 17 modules? And then what are those, those, those modules that, that, that could effectively be done um, in a, in a student self-directed way, just on a high level, you know, not to yeah, put so, yeah. no, it's okay. So, you know, like within each unit, we've identified um, two, two modules in each unit that we have said of the unit, these are the two that we feel um, carry the most information for our students that that's relevant. Um, and so, and the one module that has three identified modules, the one unit that has three identified modules um, relates to the student loan debt, um, you know, paying off their student loans and whatnot. And so like, that's an example, like if I'm looking at um, unit eight, for us, one of the most significant modules was money agreements because we understand a, a big talking point for our students is non-compete um, contracts and intellectual property contact contracts. And so this is a really great module that helps us bring in that conversation mm -hmm. and talk about it. Um, and so of course, that's one that we've identified that's really important based on, you know, feedback from students and staff. And so we've done that with each unit. There's, there's two. But yeah, those are those are just a few of them off the top of my head that I've that I can remember. Not to go down a rabbit hole here, but do you do y'all have a plan B for this asynchronous approach to, to to education if if you have to make a shift quite yet or no? Um, that is a work in progress for us, but you know, we're always, always adapting to change. You are always um, change. Yeah, I know. It's hard to be in this industry and <laughs> not deal with change, but um, especially in education, because virtual education, and asynchronous learning is becoming such um, a hot topic at the forefront of conversations, not, you know, not just in our industry, but in education in general. And so, um, yeah, that's a work in progress for us. But we 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 have a few ideas. Great, fantastic, fantastic, awesome, Brittany. Anything you'd recommend for schools looking to bring in financial literacy training like Money Edu? Yeah, you know, and I'm always going to be a huge proponent and supporter of of money because of the education that it gives our students, um, but. I think if schools are going to adopt the curriculum, which I think they should, I think they all should, but when they do, I think there's a couple of things that you really need to look at that are going to determine the success of the program. First and foremost being, who are your trainers? Because mm -hmm. you have to identify um, highly effective, passionate individuals within your campus that are going to facilitate this to the level that it needs to be taught. And that doesn't always have to be educators. You know, in some of our campuses, it's the financial aid director. It's mm. the the actual campus director. And it may not be for the whole curriculum. It may just be for one or two individual modules that you bring them in. Maybe that's their passion. But you have to identify first and foremost people who want to teach this because that's going to translate to the students, right? And so whenever we onboard 
our educators, that's part of that process is making sure that they understand the curriculum, the why, how do we engage students with it? And then finally, you know, really making sure that we understand the post-training process. How do we support students beyond the lesson with applying this to real world scenarios and having coaching conversations around, you know, financial education, because ultimately that's what's going to help them down the road. Um, you know, and so I can even say that for our campuses, I know the last time we had a training with Aaron, when you even threw it out there that, you know, the nine grid can be used in any lesson that we use in our schools. Our educators have adopted that on the daily. So it doesn't matter what lesson they're teaching, they're using that nine grid to help connect key concepts, processes, everything. Um, and so our use of this program has gone even beyond just financial literacy training. Mm, that's... Nine grid is taking over the world. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, what it is. It's, it's literally, look, literally right here. So, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. For those of you who don't know what a nine grid is, this program is literally built on one of our visual thinking tools called the nine grid and every lesson recaps it. But, you know, when we do trainings and when we work with, you know, Brittany and her team of educators, which by the way, we are always able to work with you guys. It's never like you have to pay for training. That's not something that we do here. It's just, we work with you as much as you need it. In fact, right before this, I was at another school in Jersey just kicking off. I drove over there because we will, you know, we can't always be on site, but we can be virtual when we're there. And so that's a tool that is an amazing tool for educators to use in the classroom beyond finance. And so our hope is with this program that you really gain new tools like that, but also that your educators really can transform their own, you know, their own relationship to money and also uh, be stronger educators in the classroom with the Money EDU program, but also, as you said, Brittany, and other programs too. So Brittany, thank you so much um, for, you've been such a champion of this program. You're always such a delight to talk to. And I'm, I'm really so proud of what you guys have done with this program. And I know that's a lot, um, a lot due to your leadership behind this and really commitment. So um, I just want to say thank you for just being so willing to share with everyone on this call. So anything you want to say in closing, Brittany? Um, nothing much. Again, I just, I cannot talk about how much I support this program and mm -hmm. the education that it offers to our students. So I'm just going to leave it there and thank y'all for inviting me to spend this time with you. And as always, um, I love seeing, you know, you, Aaron and Alcott, y'all are always a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, can we, can a little personal note also, uh, Brittany, wins the award for always having the best haircut too. So yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> always the best haircut. It's, yeah, but that's thanks. That's thanks to my hairdresser. Yes. <laughs> Brittany, you normally have got your signature red lips though, but you've changed I, that. I do. I do. Um I'm I apologize. I'm a little bit getting over a cold. So um <laughs> so the makeup is a little bit lighter today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You still look fantastic as always. Okay. So for those of you tuning in, I want to make sure that I wrap this up right on time because these are short and sweet community camp sessions. So Brittany did a great job talking about best practices, how they roll it ac out across different state lines, her own personal uh, passion around financial literacy, which I know Alcott and I deeply share, both the community and Pivot Point team uh, share that very deeply. And so I like to just quickly show this slide to really demonstrate this is a visual program. Uh, we are not teaching uh, finance in the way that finance has been, been traditionally taught. We're trying to make this simple and visual for a creative, emotional, intuitive learner like we know so many in the beauty and wellness sector are. And so that's what you'll find with this curriculum. And one of my favorites is, is this result. Before Community, we had over 5,000 students surveyed. Uh, they gave themselves a 5 out of 10 in terms of financial confidence. After taking the full curriculum, that went up to an 8 out of 10, which is a 60% improvement. And really, the big picture that we're really looking at is students who graduate understanding how to read a paycheck, understanding the different types of employment options in the beauty and wellness industry, understanding what it means to enter a contract or a money agreement understanding how they will actually make money once they graduate, and of course, how they will pay back student loans, why they need to pay taxes, you know, a million things that all of us need to learn to be a functioning 
uh, adult in society, but it's so sorely lacked in the traditional education system. So I'm really honored that schools like Aveda Arts and Sciences have really um, brought this in. You know, it's it's a huge uh, point of difference for your students, Brittany. And so I thank you so much. Um, with that, if you're curious about exploring more of the curriculum, I know I showed you just a few of the modules and I also uh, you heard Brittany talk a little bit about it, but if you'd like to see the curriculum for yourself, just scan this quick link. I'll leave it up momentarily um, and you can learn about the program um, and turn on a preview and see it for yourself. So with that being said, we are right at 430 Eastern time. So I'm going to uh, end this webinar. Remember, we've got our next session tomorrow, same time, and we're going to be joined with Carrie Perkins of Inspire Greatness Institute. So we've got some amazing guests. Brittany Alcott, thank you. Alcott, see you tomorrow. Brittany, tomorrow. we'll talk when we talk. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.